afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time of day you've chosen to join us here today. Thank you so much for joining us here on A Word With Adam. I'm your host, Adam Gerard, and I'm joined by five absolutely charismatic, huge South Australians. They are indie rock darlings. They are the Red Skull working gentlemen to the show. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. Well, Thanks for having us. So guys, uh, there's a lot of yes, so I guess the easiest way for everybody at home, do you just want to sound off who you are and what you do in the band for me? Sure, I'll start. Uh, my name's Tony Coppola, I'm the bass player and I do a lot of the backing vocals. I'm Jason Higgs, otherwise known as George, I'm the guitarist. Martin Montgomery, otherwise known as Monty, I play the drums. Matty, play the guitar. And I'm Jason also and I uh, sing and drink Cooper's Pale. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, and so the Red Skull, does the name come from the fact that you were engineered in a German laboratory as like a bootleg? I like the know? way you think. <laughs> So. Well, I think um, back in the day we'd started out and we'd, we'd been through a few different iterations, particularly Jason and I, and we wanted to land on something people could relate to, mm -hmm. something that's kind of fun, threw back to our, our love of comic books, which is a bit of a, a throwback to our youth, and we just wanted a, a name that people could relate to and, and not take too seriously, get a bunch of friends together, go out and see the Red Skull, it sounded like it flowed quite well. Yeah, it's a great pop band name, yeah. the Red Skull, so I forgot that sounds good. It, it, it worked and it didn't. Uh, we've had, we've, I, like the I think what, out of, if we did 10 gigs, one pub would get it right. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've had the Red Skulls, skulls. the Red Flag, Red Skulls, Red... The, the, yeah, every iteration on the Red <laughs> and Skull. Yeah. Just <laughs> red Skull. Red Skull, Red Skull, <laughs> Red Flag. Didn't we have Red Flag? Um, once? I don't know. Anyway, we got a bit nervous at one point, so we actually wrote a letter to Marvel Comics and said, <laughs> Oh no, <you> know, <laughs> getting ahead of the scene. Yes, yes. <laughs> we never heard back, so you know, no yeah. news hey. is good news, yeah. really. So. Well, you tried. Yeah, we, we tried. tried. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know you guys started out, you started out the 70s rock, was the, the appeal that brought you all together, yeah? Yes. Is, that, is that correct? Yes. So, so talk to me about it. How did you all, how did the magnet pull you all together? Well, we, we did a disastrous gig with our previous band at the. Um, I won't say the name of the pub, but we, we did a disastrous, horrible gig, Tony and me, with this previous band, and I, you know, basically, you know, spat the dummy, and, and we rang up George, I think George was at the footy, I was at the footy. he was at the footy, <laughs> said, I've got a gut full of this, do you want to be in a band? And these guys, these three guys were in a band together anyway, Okay, cool. and we just got sick of, um, we basically pulled together the best professionals in that, the that's industry that's to make the best yeah, band we could. Yeah, yeah. We were tired of being a front bar band and we thought, yeah. you know what, it's time to go that next level. And we did. We pulled 100%. together a, a group of guys that we knew could play, that we knew would deliver a show. We knew had good energy whenever we got together. 100%. And that became the Red Skull and then through a few early iterations of front bar shows that very quickly evolved into a uh, Live at the Ritz, which was a... Um, Guns N' Roses tribute Rose show, yeah. which took us to a new yeah, level. That's when I came in. Yeah. That's when Maddie came in as a second voice. guitarist. Yeah. And we suddenly became a five piece. And uh, <clears throat> from then on, we just continued on with uh, the types of shows that we thought that that fan base would enjoy. So it went from Live at the Ritz through to uh, The Big Night Out, which was a tribute to the 22 years of The Big Day Out. Mm -hmm. And more recently, we've just done the best of the uh, Hottest 100 Live, which obviously plays tribute to the best songs of the Hottest that 100 That was on Australia Day, was That's right, like, yeah, Australia Day. And I, went, I wasn't there, but I've heard that one went absolutely off. It did. Yeah, it was, it it was, was, this is a song choice, you know, it's mm -hmm. all about the song choice, I think. Of course, is that, is that something that you, because I know your catalogue, You've only been together five, six years now, yes, as a group? So, is that right? Seven this year. Seven? Probably okay. seven this year. Seven, okay. But your catalogue, in terms of like the decades it spans, is, is so huge and you've kind of morphed and evolved so quickly that, that it's almost like you've gone through three or four iterations of your band yourself in that time. Yeah, I think that's, Has that's that, right. Have yeah. you just solidify a set list? Like, is there a set list that you guys know absolutely if we crank out these, you know, 12, 15 well, we're songs? Getting there. Well, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think, you know, we've, we've had some really good iterations of sets and you go yep this works and then you think when just when you think you've got it down you go play a show with those songs and you get five or six to bomb and you go man we can't have to go back to the drawing board again with this but it's just continually refining and, and you do get a sense of you know people really enjoy these ones mm -hmm. keep them in there throw a few new ones in work on that hopefully they stick people like them keep moving on to the next one. I think by the time we got to the Hottest 100 show, we probably had... Um, it's definitely know, a back catalogue in the Hottest 100. <laughs> well, there, <laughs> there is, there is. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing, I yeah. think, when you come up with those show concepts, the more, um, 
more breadth you give yourself, the more choice you get from a, a concept, you can pull different things in and find what really works well. And I think uh, I think that last Thomas 100 show really showed that you know we can get that right mix together and, and the audience really vibes off it. Oh, that's the thing, like you know, I think one of the one of the real big things with this band is, you know, you go and see a band um, on a Saturday, Friday, Saturday night. They were stuck in this three times forty five minutes, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. a half an hour break, and it, whatever. And 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 we 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 said two things really that we don't want to do that. We want to do like a, like you would go see like a real band. We say that a lot, like a real band. You go and see the real band, and there's a band on for thirty minutes, and then there's a a band on for 90 minutes yeah, or two right. hours you know, yeah. so. mm. and, and, and it's so important like you know the, the philosophy I guess is that it's covers yeah and the, the covers that are, you know lots of bands play with some, some of them are but it has to feel like you're going to see a real band you know what I mean like with the production and mm. big lighting and yeah, sound to make it feel like a concert like a yeah. concert yeah, like yeah. A night out. yeah. yeah. and, and if, 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 people, if people come away and think well I, I didn't feel like I was at a, a like yeah. seeing a pub band or a covers band or a top 40 band, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, well, it's definitely. authenticity too. Like you've, you've got to, like in delivering, and that's what George was saying, some songs wouldn't go very well. And then you sort of think, well, maybe we're not delivering them in the best possible way. But So then you focus on the ones that you deliver in a way that people go, you know what, I, I, I believe that that was your song. Absolutely. And that's the psychology of putting on a show, you know, and... Um, it, yeah, it's, it's worked okay, but it's not by chance. So we, you know, we get together every mm -hmm. Monday night. Mm -hmm. But out of all of that, probably only one night of the month's actually with instruments. Mm -hmm. It's all sitting around at his mm -hmm. place, you know, mm -hmm. drinking beer with a pencil and paper. Yeah, and yeah looking up what the most popular song of that band was. I mean, that's the thing. We, we, we were old enough, I guess, to witness a lot of the heyday of bands in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. And then we saw that diminish through the pokey years and now they're starting to pick up again Absolutely. and we've paid particular attention and modelled ourselves on certain Adelaide bands that seem to have done it well mm -hmm. and we looked at what they did right and we've seen some of those drop off and we've then done a deep analysis as to why they've dropped off. Basically it comes down to playing songs that people like, communicating with a lot of energy and uh, making sure that we keep a certain tempo to keep that energy up all night. Yeah, and a and strong that's, image and that's the right. merch and the design of the little characters and whatnot and the design mm. of the posters, which, you know, Tony does all that. And, you know, if you're not across that, yeah. and you, you, you are going to be doing three times 45 at the dog and duck, mm. you know what I mean? You, and uh, You're going to fire it all cylinders, don't you? Yeah. Well, you do, but in all facets of the band, Absolutely. not just the music, the presentation and the... the as I say, the production, the backdrops and the lights and, and, and the way that you dress up the venue. And Absolutely. Well, it's the difference really between amateur and professional, isn't it? Like, you know, at well, the end of the day, it's those, the, the flourishes that anybody can make a lasagna, but when you go to a restaurant, you expect it to be, you know, those, those flourishes that you're going to find yeah, in 100%. There. Yeah, yeah. Little, little things. And also, it's so much more than just the songs. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's the, the experience of having that night out. You know, I've got me ticket, I've got me t-shirt, I've got me stubby holder go in and then boom and then and then right up right up into that very last song and everyone's coming out and, and again you know the psychology of it you want people to go away and say I just had the best night you know I just had the best night out with my mates and and uh, when are you playing next and, and yeah. I, I think the fact that we are all close friends as well um, yeah. that comes across in the energy yeah, uh, because we actually huge generally like yeah. each yeah. other. So it's yeah. Yeah. We enjoy yeah. our time on stage together. Yeah. Yeah. It's the chemistry. A lot of people comment, and you know, we saw it out of the, I guess, the last batch of. We were lucky enough to have mm. some really good batches of photos Fantastic. come out of that last show, the hottest 100 show, and and some of the most recurring comments are, man, look at the chemistry between you guys. Like people really notice that, and it comes across. That's what you remember about great bands, isn't it? Like well, they are, yeah. you remember yeah. the the music, and you remember just that those three the, together were such a dynamic. Yeah, yeah. 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 The Beatles, right. the Beatles, and some yeah. of those four parts individually are great, mm -hmm. but you put them together. Mm -hmm. they're Beatles. That's, that's the yeah. one we like. That's, more yeah. than the more sum, than of, your sum of your parts. Yeah. Yeah. More than the sum of your parts. You know, great players and all that, but. Some bands you go see, they're great players, aren't they? But mm. there's nothing there. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 There's plenty of good musicians yeah. in Adelaide. Yeah. 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 That way. We're not short of good musicians, but it's, it really is that chemistry and that commitment as yeah. a band yeah. to deliver a show. The delivery, yeah. yeah. The delivery. Absolutely yeah. fun. I think, yeah, I think that's it. It's fun. Yeah. Especially as an audience member, you don't, you kind of, 
when you're seeing a band, you want to feel more. Otherwise, cause you can stay home and listen to a CD. You know what I mean? You want to feel. You want to connect. Yeah, that and that's live music. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like getting a tap straight into the vein. That energy you get out of those bass amps and out of those vocals. You want that. You know, that like you talk about. You go home. Some of the concerts I remember going to, you go home and you stink of sweat. And yeah. Like, yeah. But you're just yeah. like, man, I'm exhausted for that. Well, the last few, you know, the last few, you know, people have been wringing their shirts out. <laughs> <in> their <laughs> car park, yeah. That's so, amazing. That's so what good. you want. That's it's a compliment. So That's amazing. And I've got a friend from the. Um, the life saving club where the kids go and I give them a big hug at the end of the night the other night I said get away from me man you're like so <laughs> you know, go stand over there you know but so that's uh, when you are rocking for 90 minutes to 2 hours like that that's a, that's a long time yeah I guess try being the drummer <laughs> <laughs> hey you got a seat what are you worried about yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> sort him out yeah. um, what, what are the I guess what are the tricks you guys have learned over the years of how to Maintain it because I imagine when you first go out for your first tour gig, there's going to be a, some point around the 70 minute mark where the wind starts kicking in a little bit, and you're like, Is it time yet? What's going on here? Yeah, you know, how do you, how do you, yeah. it's different up there, though, isn't it? It's different, it does go to another level, it definitely goes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've found like, it's different, yeah, yeah, I can go off and have a stretch, and it's really funny, I think, as we've done you know, a number of these shows, and when we were touring the big night out show around Australia, um, I think we started getting to a point where we go, are we that far oh, in so already? Oh, like, wow. you, you don't actually, the more the more we've done it, the more we've realised that the show flies. When you're up yeah. there and we're having fun and the audience is having fun, we're engaging with them and they're sort of sending energy back, it flies. And, and sometimes I think, you know, you don't realise that it is, you know, 75, 80 minutes into a 90 minute gig or a two hour gig, yeah. you just... That's it, and, and you sort of look down and you go, man, I actually wish there was another half Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Sometimes it's you awesome look at it and you're halfway through the set list and you think, oh, damn, we're already halfway. <laughs> I'm, really into, I'm just getting into my stride, you know, I want this to last another couple of hours. Yeah. But yeah, all good things. Uh, some of us go to the gym to keep in shape, I won't say who. Some of us go to the pub. <laughs> but it all, you know, it all, it's, um, it all works. We try to be you know, match fit, mm -hmm. and as George says, you know, you get that just by doing it, and uh, the adrenaline is there, you know, on the on the, on the night, and uh, yeah, it's good, it's good. But it's funny too, you know, some nights, there's little things that, you, you like you say, you get into fifth gear, you could go all night, some nights you are tired, some, some mornings you wake up sore, some mornings you don't wake up yeah. sore, it's, it's, it's no formula really, mm -hmm. just... Uh, the but day it, after a big show is normally a bit of a sleep, and I must admit, you do feel it. I don't get to sleep. Yeah. You're carrying around. <laughs> well, in my case, I'm carrying around, you know, an eight kilo base, and we're jumping around, and that that'll go for two, three hours, depending yeah. on the weeks. And it does. You you carry on afterwards, but the next morning you do feel, you do feel like you've expended some energy. That's I'm for sure. sure. Yeah. Um, so you've done this for so long, and it, and you are you're at this level that is higher than most pop bands and most other bands realistically I put you at that level what what happens for you guys now when you go to gigs do you uh, do you go to gigs and sit there kind of like I do when I go to film sometimes and I'll be loving a film then there's a shot and I'm like I'm out this film I don't care anymore you did something yeah. that just like is there something like that that happens for you guys well, when you see gigs I guess if I take a step back from that we still like to support our local pubs that still support live music so Absolutely. one way or the other I will go to the pubs on a Friday night around the corner just to see what's going on because I want to support the live music scene and I know if an, you know if a lot of people don't think that way before we know it it's just back it's to on. yeah DJs etc so I'll yeah. go regardless it's hit and miss you know some some guys are back where we were maybe 10 15 years ago some guys have got a, an extraordinary amount of talent mm -hmm. but I guess they don't really convey that energy so yeah. the crowd doesn't really get swept up in the enthusiasm is that what you think the most important thing is energy yeah I, you know your stuff be an accomplished musician, but then it's all about bringing them into the fold, and making a show media, about them. Social media, absolutely. you know, yeah. like, you know, you talk to other bands and, and you see them moaning on Facebook about various things and, that uh, you know, there is still people out there that think, you know what, we'll just stick a couple of posters up mm. on a bus stop and 500 people will come. It doesn't, no. No, no it's not even to no. No. And see, we're lucky because Tony's digital marketer, mm. you know, um, all of these things, does all the design. Uh, but if you're not across that, and, and, and I think more importantly too, if you're not prepared to spend money on it, you're stuffed because 500 people won't yeah, show up. Right. You know, yeah, everyone's exactly. on their phone like 24-7 right. yeah. and, and they've yeah. got, you've got to catch their eye and catch their yeah. ear and you, 
and you don't do that anymore with a poster on a on a bus stop, you no. know. Um, so unless I think, you know, unless you understand that and you're willing to commit some level of resource and and, and you know financial mm. resource and creative resource to that, you you want to hide and well, get nothing. Further, yeah, yeah. Not. no, you can't. And, and to complement that, I will say um, having a person to represent the band in social media, one, not several voices, just one, and in our case, it's. Jason you just get the, the tone, man. you create a tone. It's a consistent yeah. tone, it's yeah. a consistent yeah. tone consistent. of voice. He engages very well with anyone that wants to communicate with us. It's not anybody jumping on a comment, it's very much a consolidated voice yes. through one. Why person. did you say yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and you've got to all your trust in one person. What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> delete your comment. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, mean, I guess that makes sense. You are you are the front man of the group, so yeah, it makes yeah, sense yeah. that you're the conduit for yeah. your Instagram. Oh, look, it doesn't have to be the lead singer or the you know from, but in our case, it is. Yeah, I've yeah. seen other bands where it's the drummer. Okay. You know, That's as right. long as it's right. one voice one and he's voice. speaking on behalf of the band really? and he has some sort of PR sense. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. keep it positive. Keep it positive. Can I give us when it comes to a key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, do you guys feel like you've come a little bit full circle now? You started. The support act for Angry Anderson Rose Tattoo back at one of the, the early CCB she shows. Now you are the headline band for this. Does it feel a bit coming full circle, or how does it feel? Well, well we're ready. Well, we're ready. Okay. You know, we're ready. Of course we are. You know, like I mean, everyone. You know, when you get in there and and you uh, you're able to sort of put your own stamp on the venue, I suppose. Like we said, you always have put you know put up the banners and. The, the, the set dressing and all that, and then we have the merch up, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, and then you get, of course, a much longer set as well. Absolutely. I mean, we were shaking with fear when we were angry, you know. <laughs> yeah. you know. I think a lot of people shake with fear. Yeah. 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 Go talk to him, now you go talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it was, wasn't just that, I mean, the first uh, Child of Cancer show, you know, people like, you know, Rob Riley was there, mm -hmm, yeah. you know, David Blight from Cold Chisel was there, mm -hmm. all these people were there, like, Sign my record, please, David. <laughs> okay. I mean, not just that, but I mean, Jill Hicks emceeing the. Jill Hicks is um, there. You know, an amazing person to to sort of be around and 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 be involved in an event like that with someone like Jill was was just unbelievable. And there were some cracking other South Australian musicians that were playing. Yeah, Chris Finnan was there. Wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, Chris yeah. Finnan, and I mean, there, there was such a, a you know a fantastic, talented. Uh, group of people and, and to start there and, and to see where I guess the, the Child of Cancer Benefit Concert series have, have now come and you know, we're being asked to come back and, and, and not just be involved but we're getting a shot now to, you know, to headline this. Um, yeah, it, it's a pretty cool feeling. There's new people too, you know, yeah, like course. travel, mm -hmm. you know, it's a couple of hours up, even, you know, two or three hours up the road. We get to travel and there's people that haven't seen the band Absolutely. before. And that's really important, isn't it? Like mm. growing your audience, you know. Um, so we do want to travel more. A little bit last year, um, but we do want to get out there again this year. And um, yeah, so that's another huge thing as well. The fact that this one isn't in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. um, but then not playing in Adelaide isn't foreign to us now. And I think, well, especially after your tour, like well, you did whenever. And, and yeah, well, exactly. And, and I think where whenever we have played a show away from Adelaide, you know, away from our comfort zone, we've always gone, right, might not be anyone here, boys, but, you know, if there is, we'll, we'll <laughs> still play like there's 500 people in front of us, and mm -hmm. quite often, we've walked away with, you know, we don't often see it as, you know, we've made some new fans, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we've made new friends mm -hmm. uh, when we go and do these shows, and I think that's been the biggest thing, I think, you know, if you connect with the audience through your energy of your show, and People enjoy what you do, and you know, it's great when they come up afterwards and go, like, man, we had no idea who you guys were, and we've just seen a fantastic show. And, yeah, we just blew and, in. You yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just thought, hey, you guys, you know, you guys look yeah. interesting, you sounded yeah. interesting, we thought we'd come have a look, and then we make, yeah, fans, but they're new friends, and mm. yeah, it's fantastic. That's awesome. Childhood cancer is obviously a very terrible thing, there's no denying that. Um, cancer itself is, is horrible, but I know we, we've all got a story somehow that has touched us. I, I guess, do any of you have a story you'd like to share about 
um, why this event kind of has that kind of personal feeling to it. The statistics are something like one in three people are affected by cancer and I guess it's even more tragic when you see a child and it pulls on everyone's heartstrings. And yeah. If there's something we can do to assist in that space, doing what we love, then why wouldn't we? You know, it's just a given that, that we're happy to be there. It's not the first charity event we've performed at, but it's probably one of the more important ones, charities that we've contributed to, that's for sure. Mm. I mean, you know, we've all got kids and, the, the, uh, yeah. you know, you, you can empathise with what well, you try to anyway, don't you? Yeah. Mm. And uh, you know, my kids have both been at Women's and Kids over the years. One was born there, and uh, they've both been in there for various things over the years. And I know that you know one of the one of the, the beneficiaries of these shows is the Women's and Kids uh, Foundation. Foundation. So, so for me, just wind me up and point me in the right direction. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. Were your kids born at Women and Kids? All three of mine. There you go. Women's so you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Were yours? No. No. So, uh, Get out. <laughs> <laughs> But no, in all seriousness, yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, why wouldn't you? The last question I've got for you guys is, uh, this is for everyone in Port Pirie right now, who's, who's sitting there with their wallets, anxiously waiting to click to buy the tickets. Just send us your credit card. What can they, what can they look forward to? We're calling this one, uh, the best songs of your life. Okay. So the soundtrack to your life, you know. So we, we know the people that, that comes to see our, our shows, it's big groups of people, big groups of guys, big groups of girls. Yeah. You know, night out with your mates, you know, leave pass, you know, babysitter pass, used up. Uh, let's go out and we want to hear those songs that just gonna, you know, every single song is gonna rekindle some memory, mm. you know, of whether you know, at school or at uni or you, you know, anything. I mean, a good story from the, the Gov last week was a couple of hard lads come in and they're, you know, oh, you're just all this red skull about and they're going, you know, these are guys that would never have danced at a show, you know, or actually, you know, let alone dance, but let alone even, you know, appear to have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and and they're, they're down the front, you know, waving bottles of rosé around at the end, you know. So, uh, to answer your question though, Adam, what can people expect? That you get two hours plus of, yeah, the, the, the best songs of your life, you know. Um, rock songs, mm -hmm. predominantly, um, but just performed in a real uh, entertaining way and you know we, we said last week too I mean it, it's a bit like a great big karaoke where everyone's in this room and the, you know the singer shouldn't have to do much work you're just like this <laughs> whole night and everyone's singing yeah. along you know and a lot of energy a lot of fun crowd um, participation crowd participation we've got um St. Mark's School is doing a Beatles bit of a Beatles yeah, tribute really before us as well so that's going to set the scene and uh so, um, if that's not enough for you, you know, there's also the fact that it is for childhood cancer. So that's right. And uh, it's a great venue. You, you, they're going to expect just a big night out. Yeah, and that, that's, and that's it, the name. That's it's it. a big night out for childhood cancer. Mm. So it's going to be great. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, yeah. guys, I can't wait to see it. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. The Red Skull tickets are available at the link below right now. Guys, thank you so much once again. Thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah, thanks for having us. This has been a Cabana production.